Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor here at Texas A&M University. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the liver, gallbladder, salivary glands, and the pancreas. That is, we'll talk about the origin. A salivary uh, prevents uh, infections. Uh, also, salivary gland cells, ducts, striated ducts, features and functions. Salivary prevents infections, as we said. Uh, serous and mucus, uh, asinine, myoepithelial cells, or squeezed cells. Uh, and pancreatic cells uh, in the endocrine exocrine functions of the pancreas and the cells. If we switch horses to the salivary glands and then we can see a salivary gland of a dog and here we can see salivary glands of a human, uh, the asinus is the functional unit of the salivary gland and some of them are serous or proteinaceous secretions, some are mucus and then some things are mixed. Uh, salivary glands come from the the ectoderm, the oral uh, ectoderm, uh, epithelial sheet, and then the GI tract comes from the endoderm, uh, as you know. Now, saliva is important because it produces IgA uh, antibodies, IgA antibodies, or the secretory uh, antibodies. So you have uh, plasma cells produce antibodies, and you have transcytosis to transport that uh, into into uh, the lumen. Transcytosis, as you know, transfer things from one uh, surface to uh, another surface. Uh, also, it produces uh, lactoferrin, which binds iron that's needed for bacteria to divide, so it prevents bacteria from dividing. Also, it lysis on the kills bacteria, and it constantly washes away, dislodging bacteria uh, as you swallow down the GI tract. And here we can see the salivary gland, and it kind of has a, a host of different uh, components to it. Uh, you can have a serous type, which has a nucleus in the, in the middle, as opposed to the mucus type with the nucleus at the bottom. Uh, and this is a proteinaceous, more, uh, uh, more uh, eosinophilic. Uh, and this is more lighter staining. Uh, is the mucus. And then you also have these myoepithelial cells that surround it and squeezes it uh, out. And if you go from there, you go to the intercalated duct, which is simple uh, columnar epithelial cells. You may still have myoid epithelial cells around it. And then you come to a striated duct, a unique duct. It's striated. You can see the lines in through there. And it's uh, striated because you have infolding to the plasma membrane, and that lines up mitochondria. So the striations that we're seeing are really the mitochondria that are lined up because the plasma membrane has enfolded in through there. And that is the purpose of that, uh, is to increase the surface area to pump out uh, the electrolytes. It pumps out the salt, uh, leaving uh, the uh, liquid in through there to make a hypotonic uh, solution. So you have the uh, the secretory portion goes to the intercalated duct, and from there it goes to uh, the striated duct. So this is the intercalated duct. This is a, a mucus and a serous type uh, secretion. Again, sometimes you can have the mucus cells surrounded by uh, the serous cells, uh, and um, and that makes a serous demilun. So we we'll call it a serous demilun that we threw there that we can see. You have inter. inter uh, intercalated ducts as well as the striated duct in the salivary gland. Here we can see uh, the infolding of the plasma membrane and through here and there and the lining up of the mitochondria which causes the striations. And then here we can see the striations which are really the mitochondria uh, lined up to their secretory portion and this is a striated duct portion. And I mentioned to you the purpose of the striated duct uh, is to pump the sodium out uh, to go to a hypotonic solution. Um, liquid is produced at 300 milliosmos, but then by the time it gets into the uh, interlobular duct, uh, uh, the sodium concentration has dropped down a lot in through their osmolality has reduced. Uh, and that makes sense because if you're going to dilute foodstuffs, you need to have a hypotonic solution, uh, not an isotonic solution. And so the striated ducts in the salivary glands uh, pumps out the salts, so you have a more watery uh, saliva. And here we can see the salivary glands. This is a secretory portion that you see the intercalated duct. 
uh, kind of cuboidal cells lining through there. You can see it goes from the uh, intercalated duct. Uh, and a calated duct goes to the striated duct. Here we can see a striated duct here, and you can see the mitochondria have lined up there. Uh, the enfolding of the plasma membrane lining up in the mitochondria has made these striated ducts um, uh, visible. Salivary glands is a compound tubular acinar, uh gland. So these are these are uh, acini, but also have a tubular component. Uh, to them as well. You can see a tuber component uh, right there. There's the, the mucus and the serous, and this will be a serous demolum uh, in the case of here. So you have a secretory portion of the asinus, then you have the intercalated duct, striated duct, and then some kind of excretory duct. The serous, mucus, and the myoid epithelial cells. You can see the myoid epithelial cells that contract to squeeze it out. And here we can see uh, it's going from a, a mucus type uh, cell to the intercalated duct, for the intercalated duct to the striated duct, uh, that you can see the process of going from one to another uh, duct, as you can see. We can see again, these are striated ducts in through there. You can see the uh, a little bit of restoration associated with them. Uh, there's also intercalated duct that we can see in through there. Uh, and there's an intercalated duct, another striated duct. Also, we can see some fat cells, fat cells distributed out through there. There's a vein, there's an artery. Uh, another one, we can see the serous and the mucus uh, secretions. Again, the serous has a spherical nucleus, and mucus is off the base. Uh, the mucus has a flattened nucleus and, and a kind of lighter staining cytoplasm, as you can see here. This is a serous, this is a mucus, and here we see the striated duct with the lining up by the mitochondria. Uh, and this particular one, we can see a nerve in through there as well as mucus and serous se secretions that are there. The pancreas is the last organ, uh, and here we can see uh, some ducts in the pancreas. You have the islet salonger hand, you have the pancreatic astronaut cells, and these astronaut cells empty into an intercalated duct. Um, and then that empties into an uh, intralobular duct, uh, but the intralobular duct is not striated. There's no striated duct in the pancreas, uh, but the intralobular duct connects the intercalated duct uh, with the interlobular duct, uh, but it's not striated uh, in, the, in the pancreas. So in the pancreas, we have both uh, exocrine uh, with the pancreatic gastric cells, uh, and their duct system, and the endocrine uh, with the uh, insulin and glucagon being produced in the eyelids or longer hand. Uh, so we will see how things are organized. They're organized and so that the endocrine part is distributed throughout the pancreas. Uh, and uh, we can see that the eyelids are there. We'll be able to see the ducts and the asini uh, and how it works. So if we look at a piece of pancreas, we see the pancreatic astral cells and asinus uh, here. Uh, we can see some connective tissue, and we see these lighter areas, which are the pancreatic islets or the islets of longer hand. You can see them. They're distributed throughout the pancreas. They're distributed in the pancreas because they have a local uh, portal system between the islets and the pancreatic astral cells. And that's why it needs to be distributed throughout because there's a local portal system uh, among each, uh, around each one of these uh, islets. Uh, regarding the duct system, uh, of course you have uh, the astral cells are serous type with zymogen granules uh, near the lumen which gives a red color to it. The blue tint in the bottom is the ribosomes of the rough and the plasma reticulum associated with making uh, those proteins. Uh, and uh, from, from the asinus you have these centrar asinar cells which is one thing is pointed out here, and that's actually the beginning of a duct. And that beginning of the duct is the intercalated duct. Uh, and then the intercalated duct goes to an in, a trilobular duct and then an interlobular duct. But the intralobular duct, not shown here, uh, is, is non striated. <coughs> Indicates of the pancreas because everything is isotonic. You're not producing a hypotonic saliva uh, in the case of the pancreas. So here we can see the pancreas, uh, the uh, intercalated duct, 
uh, it looks very similar to what we saw in the salivary gland. You see it here. Uh, you see one here, and you see one coming there. You can also see the central asner cells. So you can see these cells here actually, they're inside an asnus, but they're starting to duck. Um, and here we can see an asnus there, uh, the cells starting a duck that continues, uh, continues there. And so here we can see the central asner cells inside the asnus, and then this is an intercalated uh, duct that appears there. Uh, another view, you can see the intercalated duct, again, like simple cuboidal epithelium surrounding the thing. And then we see the clear eyelids along her hand, and we see that they're distributed uh, throughout the pancreas. And this is where you have the alpha and beta cells. The beta cells are more numerous, uh, and they're more in the center uh, of the eyelids. And then we have major blood vessels in the connective tissue, nerves, of course, uh, in the connective tissue. And here's the interlobular duct. So you go from an intercalated duct to intralobular to interlobular, but the intralobular is not strided in the case of the pancreas. And here we see the pancreatic aster cells with lots of rough in the plasma reticulum, a big nucleus, uh, euchromatic nucleus with a big nucleolus associated with making a ribosome, ribosome on RNA, uh, and then uh, finally, uh, the production of zymogen granules. Uh, you see some ones that are less condensed, condensed, and finally uh, they're released at the surface. And here we can see the, the tight junctions between adjacent pancreatic astro cells and also between this astro cell and this duct cell. So this is the starting of a duct. So this is part of a duct, the intercalated duct uh, that, that we can see. And here we can see the islets of longer hand uh, here. We can see the pancreatic aster cells and the asnus. We can see it here with the zymogen granules are located next to the lumen where it's discharged. Uh, you can see the central aster cells right in through there, which is actually the beginning. And you see this multiple times. That's the, actually the beginning of a duct. And here's the intercalated duct, another intercalated duct. Uh, and these guys here are, are the uh, interlobular ducts uh, that uh, connect or in the connective tissue there uh, that are between the different uh, uh, lobes uh, of there. So in summary, uh, the uh, digestive tract associated organs do important things. Uh, they help uh, uh, the defense against uh, pathogens. Uh, they store uh, and release uh, nutrients uh, on demand. Uh, and they also help to to produce digestive juices uh, and help uh, in antimicrobial growth of things. We have some questions on the liver, pancreas, and salivary glands. The humoral activity of the immune system is illustrated by the transfer of IgA, immunoglobulin, by the epithelial cells in which of the following fluid. Saliva, yes. Milk, yes. Bile, yes. The answer is E. Uh, all these body fluids will have antibodies associated with them. Which function uh, functions do not match uh, the gallbladder? Which functions do the gallbladder and the urinary bladder have in common? Temporary storage of waste products? Yep, yeah, bowel and urine. Concentration uh, of respective luminal contents? No. Uh, the urine does not concentrate it. Uh, it is concentrated in the, in the gallbladder. Uh, the secretions are. Uh, and then uh, uh, the bowel is, I should say. Also, you got similar type of aluminum? No, they're not similar. You got transitional in the urinary bladder and you got simple columnar in the uh, gallbladder. A characteristic of the pancreas include a portal uh, blood vascular system? Yes, between the, the ilex cells and the pancreatic acid cells, there's a portal system. Uh, also, the endocrine uh, cells are in the eyelids lung hand? Yes. Uh, the ast uh, astral cells and striated duct? No. There's no striated duct in the pancreas. Striated duct is the function of that is in the salivary gland to make a hypotonic solution. You don't need a hypo 
isotonic solution uh, in the pancreas. Everything is isotonic, so the answer is D. We want to acknowledge original sources of images, figures, or drawings that might have been used during these presentations, and they have been identified uh, on the slide for which it was used. This is the end of the liver salivary gland pancreas origin salivary uh, saliva protects us against infection. Uh, uh, striated duct features and functions, uh, serous and mucous cells, myelopathelial cells, uh, the pancreas cells, endocrine and excrement ones, and the pancreatic astral cells and the islets of Langerhans. Uh, and end with summary and questions. Thank you.